Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show 45. In our last episode, we had one of our Q&A episodes and answered questions from our listeners. Today, we're chatting on why it's important to focus on immediate result actions versus long-term. Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, where we bring you real-life strategies on starting and growing a business and finding financial freedom without sacrificing the life you have with your loved ones. We are your hosts, Tom and Ariana Sylvester, and we are married, we're parents, and we're serial entrepreneurs. This podcast is for those who want more out of life. We'll show you how to take the vision you have and create the business that will help you achieve it. Join us as we share practical steps, real life stories, and help you become a lifestyle builder. All right, so today I'm going to pick a little bit on Tom because I think what we're going to chat about is kind of an important um, analogy. I guess it's a little bit of an analogy to is, our topic is there any today. Time when you don't pick on me. Uh, a couple episodes ago, you picked on me, so you're fine. Um, but no, a lot of you may have heard over time that Tom was a huge video game player when we first met in college. And one of the games that I never understood. <laughs> Final was Fantasy. His obsession. Well, yes, definitely that one. But then his obsession with like Zelda. Oh, Zelda's awesome. And mm. I mean, even Final Fantasy, very similar here, where there is an overarching goal to complete the game. But then as you're kind of moving through, they're like these little things that you have to take care of along the way. And they have to kind of be done in sequential order because if you don't do the right things at the right times, you're not actually going to be able to get to the end of the game and win the whole thing. And that's kind of similar to what we're talking about in business where there's always going to be that long-term goal, that overarching goal that you have. But a lot of times you have to almost put that aside and focus only on the next thing. Like what's the next battle you have to win in Final <laughs> Fantasy or Zelda? Not like, oh, well, when I get to the end of the game, I, I'm going to do this. It's You you say that so epically. You're like, <laughs> battle. You know, um, it's actually a really good analogy. And um, I'm going to take... Thanks, I thought so. <laughs> I was going to say, and I'm going to take it back to old school Zelda, like on um, like Nintendo. And I forget how many levels there were on there, but you had to go to like different like dungeons and beat the dungeon. But you had to do things in a sequential order because like, let's say to beat dungeon two, you need to have the boomerang. Well, you had to do now the previous real details, <laughs> well, but you had to do the previous thing in order to get the boomerang because otherwise if you went and did the other stuff that would help you later on, but you didn't have the boomerang, you couldn't do dungeon number two. Mm -hmm. So, but it's exactly like you said, the same thing in business. What a lot of people will do is they might look ahead at what somebody else is doing and somebody else is on like step 10 of building their mm -hmm. business and they're doing a certain set of activities, but there's no need to do the activities for step 10 if you're on step two. And not only is there no need, it's actually going to waste your time because the stuff they're doing at step 10 isn't going to get you to step three. Yep. And um, we talked a couple episodes ago about when people get stuck one of the big factors that we see when people get stuck is they're trying to do all the other things that are maybe good, but not good right now. Mm -hmm. And it ends up taking their time and focus away from the immediate things they should do now to get to their next step. Well, and I mean, that's not completely their fault because what does everyone tell you to do? They say, go find someone successful who's doing what you want to do and follow what they're doing. That is a good concept, but you have to be aware of where you are and where they are and look at what they were doing when they were at the step you were at. That's key. Like you can't just say, oh yeah, go follow someone successful and do everything they do. Like you said, they're at step 10 and you're at step two. Those things aren't going to match up. You need to actually go back. And like, if they've kind of documented their journey, you're going to go back to when they were at step two. Hey, what was this person doing back when they were at step two like me? Okay, now you can follow the steps that they took at each level to ultimately hopefully get to where they're at at level 10. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I. so we, we talk with a lot of entrepreneurs and we have a lot of entrepreneurs that come and end up working with us. And um, one of the most common things that comes up when they come to work with us is they, they're stuck. 
And oftentimes, like the first thing we always have them do is kind of do a time audit and see where they're focusing their time and energy. More often than not, they're focusing on things that don't immediately get them to their goal. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the, you know, for people that are newer into business, one of the common things they want to do is leave their job. So if you want to leave your job, it's a pretty simple process. doesn't mean it's easy, no. but it's simple. Figure out how much money you need to leave your job. Figure out what your offers are and how much you're charging. Figure out how many of those offers you need to sell. Go and find the people that need that and do it. That's the most direct path to mm -hmm. do this. But when we find a lot of people, they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Like here's a popular one and <laughs> so a lot of people will start a podcast Yep. and we have a podcast mm -hmm. and a podcast is a long-term thing. Yeah. A podcast. Which does, we figured out yeah. the last time we had a podcast I was gonna say, and stopped doing it. Exactly. So <laughs> one of the first things we always tell people to do, especially if they're stuck and they're trying to get to their next level, we'll usually have them stop their podcast. We'll usually have them stop creating a whole bunch of content or blogs or all this stuff they're doing because none of that stuff immediately gets you to your goals. What we'll usually have them do is figure out a direct strategy to start making sales and do that. Yeah. Because far too often people are spending all of their time on those longer term things and, and like you said, we did the same thing. So we, if you didn't listen to our old podcast, it was called the Serial Startups Podcast. We put that out because we thought, oh, everyone says go and create this content and, you know, that's how you'll get sales and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. If you want to get sales, focus directly on getting sales. Mm -hmm. Focus on your shortest route between where you're at and how you get a sale. Once you've kind of got those things in place, then you can start layering in all this other stuff. You know, it's the same type of thing, like if you're going to go and sell to somebody, you want to first target the people that immediately need your stuff. They know they need it and they're looking for a solution. Mm -hmm. Once you've kind of exhausted all those people, now you're going to go to kind of the next level of people that maybe don't quite know they need it, but they're maybe starting to look or whatever, and it's going to take them a little bit longer. Yeah. And then eventually you'll go to what's called your cold traffic, your cold audience, to people that don't know nothing about you, and you're going to kind know of... nothing. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, negative. as that came out, I'm <laughs> totally like, Totally calling oh. you out. <laughs> but then you're going to go and find people that aren't even aware that they have a problem, and their path to becoming a customer is so much longer. But it doesn't make sense to go and start with those people. Yeah. You want to start with the people that already know that they're looking to purchase this and you're just getting in front of them with your offer. Well, and I mean, that's it comes down to the the revenue generating tasks. You know, a lot of us get sucked into the sexy marketing of build your list and grow your Instagram and grow your Facebook followers and do all of these <laughs> things that look really cool and they sound really fun. And I'm not saying that they're not. But if those things are not directly generating revenue for you, don't focus on them. Well, I was going to say. Like building an email list is not helping you unless you have something to sell those people on their email list and they're buying it. Yeah. It's, having thousands of people on your list isn't helping you generate revenue unless you you know what those people want and you're selling it to them. Yeah. And, and you know, so many good things here. So one, um, I remember like stupid mistake. Don't do this. Back in the day when we first kind of shifted to online, um, we were actually paying to run ads to get likes to our Facebook page. Yep. We spent like, I don't know, well over a thousand dollars to get likes to our page. That did nothing. No. You know, it, that was for the li wine and liquor store, wasn't it? No, that, that was actually a good use. Um, that was for our, our coaching business. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, I can't even remember now. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so like that was a great example of not a good use of our time and money because getting likes on our Facebook page did not directly contribute to any of the goals that we had at that time, mm -hmm. but it made us feel good. And same thing with like building an email list. If, you know, a couple things. One, you're going to pay to have that email list. Two, you've got to now add a whole bunch of stuff you got to add automations and sequences and you got to be constantly contacting those people that takes a lot of time and effort and usually isn't the direct most direct way yep. to get your customers but what a lot of people don't want to do is they don't like selling or they don't know how to sell yep. so it sounds really good and it's much easier to like 
post on social media or to go and build up an email list. But those are longer term strategies that come into play later on. You know, so like whenever I, it's funny, a lot of people that come and want to work with us, um, I'll ask their goals and oftentimes their goals are, I want to grow my social media following or I want to do this. I'm like, don't you want to make money? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like tell me about how much money you want to make. Well, and it's why, why do you want to grow those things? Well, I want it, I want to make money, but then it's like, so how is that, how is that going to help you make money? Exactly. Can you connect growing your social media following to making more money? Because if you can't show me your conversion rates on a post of, Hey, I posted about my product and I had this many people buy, then growing your social media following doesn't make sense for you. If you can, Go ahead. Absolutely. Grow on. <laughs> but but why that would make sense is because that's directly contributing to the goal you want, yep. right? Like what you talked about earlier. And here's the other challenge that I think a lot of people get into. We always talk about when you're deciding what to do, you want to start with your goals and work backwards. Mm-hmm. What a lot of people will do is they'll start from where they're at and they'll move forward. So they'll logically say, okay, um, I'm going to grow my Instagram followers. Okay, well, why are you doing that? Well, because if I have them growing, then I'm going to be able to sell them something or whatever. And they have this logic forward of how they do it, where what we want you guys to think about is set your end goal and then work backwards because what that's going to do... Logic (laughs) backwards. Yeah. What that's going to let you do is decompose the key things to get you there Instead of kind of building forward, because when you're trying to build forward like this, what you can tend to do is do a lot of things that don't directly contribute, but you don't realize it right yeah. away. Well, and if you're not tracking, do these things directly contribute? You definitely don't realize it. You know, we we ourselves were, were um, we did this at the early stages and at the very beginning. We know a lot of other people that do. They're like, well, I have this many followers here and, and I have this many people on my list. And, and then, you know, I'm making this much a month. And then you say, oh, okay, well, do you know where all those people are coming from that are buying from you? And they're like, no. (laughs) So they haven't directly related back where those sales are coming from, from all of those different places. And what that does is you don't know where to spend more of your time because you don't know where the sales are coming from. So it could very well be that your sales are coming from your emails. If that's the case, you know you don't have to spend as much time on social media because you can focus on your email list, growing that, and keep asking those people what they need and selling it to them. If you have an email list and your conversion rates are horrible on how many people are opening and how many people are buying from you, you know you can probably step back from your email list and not worry so much about constantly pumping out, you know, content on your list and focusing on where you do know those people are coming from. Maybe you are rocking it at Instagram and people love you and are clicking your link and buying stuff through there. Then now, you know, you can go and take an Instagram training or figure out how to boost your Instagram following so that you are upping your sales through the the most direct channel. Yeah. I was going to say one of the things um, people are always like, well, how do I get more sales? And when we look at you know, the, the first question I ask is, well, where are most of your sales coming today? To your point, a lot of people don't know. But once you figure that out, you might realize that 80%, 90% are coming from one channel. And then what we'll usually do with people, they're spending time on six different marketing channels. Mm-hmm. But most of their, like, let's say they're spending uh, 20%, five marketing channels. They're spending 20% of their time <laughs> to on make each. make the math easy. Yeah. <laughs> they're spending 20% of their time on each channel. But channel five is actually producing 80% of the results. So what we'll end up having those people do is we'll reduce or even eliminate the other channels and say, take all that extra time you were using and pump it into channel five because that's mm-hmm. the one that's working. Yep. But if you don't know the metrics and you don't know what is working, you're going to be spending a lot of your time not directly contributing to the results. Yeah. Well, and this is not to say that you're not eventually going to branch out with things. Like if Correct. your long-term goal is to get to a certain level, most likely you're going to have to get to each consistent level on the way there and do something differently. So this is not to say that you're only ever going to be on one marketing channel and you're going to exhaust that marketing channel. No, it's this, you're, you're taking the most direct route and you're getting to a certain goal using that marketing channel. And then you can test going back to some of the other places. Once you figure out why is this working? What is it about this that has people coming back to buy from me? How can you duplicate that 
to one other different marketing channel. And one at a time, you can kind of build out and test the different places where your audience is and see if you get the same results there or if it doesn't work for some reason. You can dive into why it doesn't work and you can say, well, I've tried a couple different things here and nothing seems to be working. I'm just gonna write that one off, try something else. Yep, and you know, so I wanna, this, this applies across the board. I know we're kind of talking about sales and marketing, but like here's an example Random. from our, um, our strategy call last night with our lifestyle builder members. And one of the, the questions that came up was um, this guy and his business partner both had different under thoughts about how they should make revenue. So um, his business partner wanted to like focus more on like more like one time sales that were for more money, mm -hmm. whereas he wanted to focus more on um, recurring sales that would get less money now, but potentially more over time. And so they were looking for advice on where they should focus. So the question we asked was, you know, well, what's the immediate goal that you guys have? And it was to start generating um, an income for the partner. So if the immediate goal is to start generating an income for the partner, when we look at those two things, the one that says you're making one time sales and at a higher price point now, that would be where you would want to spend your immediate time because it's the quickest way to get to your goal. Mm -hmm. Now, as we walk through that, we said, you know, and if part of your longer term goals are to build up your recurring monthly income so that every month you're not starting from zero, sure, you'll layer that stuff in over time, but only once you've done the first thing. You know, and that's where a lot of people get confused is, especially like everyone talks about like passive income. Mm -hmm. So people try to like build Buzzword. passive income from like day one and more often than not, like that's not the way to do it. More often you want to like, let's say you're trying to leave your job, right? Figure out what is the quickest way for me to get that income. And then you might shift your income sources later on to get passive. Yeah. Well, and this also depends on like what your goals are. There are some people out there who absolutely love their jobs. They have no plans of ever leaving their jobs. That's just something they enjoy doing. They have a good job. It's making good income. It's stability. But they want extra income on the side for certain things for their family or a certain lifestyle that they're looking to live. Well, then in that case, maybe you are looking more for passive income business models, but you're still going to need to focus on like, what are those exact next things you need to be doing to build the right kind of income that you're looking for? So, I mean, that, like real estate, we talked about was, real estate with just Justin Heiner. It yep. took him longer to get to the point he wanted to get, but it was, it was pretty much by the book, here's what you do and take these steps and then you could ultimately make however much or however little passive income you want using real estate. Yeah, that's oh, I was going to say. So um, so we have three different businesses. We have real estate investing, we have a wine and liquor store, and we have our coaching and training business for entrepreneurs. And if I look at those, um, the order which we created them was a little backwards. I wouldn't do again yep. knowing what we know now. So, for example, we started with um, rental real estate. I mean, which Dustin did too, and it worked out well. But that requires a lot more money and a lot more time up front. And like, we get a lot of benefit because we have assets that build value over time. Tenants paid on the mortgage. We get cash flow. But if the immediate goal, like for us, was to be able to leave our jobs to do more, that's, the wrong that's a longer term strategy. Yep. You know, um, even with our wine and liquor stores. So anytime you're in like a retail store and anytime you have investments like that, we're going to buy product. Usually it's going to take you a longer period of time to be able to build up the same income or get the same profit yep. coming out of different business models, like our service business yep. of coaching. So like looking back on that, our wine and liquor store is great because it's stable, it's growing. Um, but usually that'd be a business that you would want to start, I would say, after you've done something else. Even the same thing with real estate. So you can start with real estate, but if you start with another business that generates cash for you right away, then you can diversify and reduce your risk by taking the money from your first source that's really you know generating good income and putting it into other ones to spread it apart. Yeah. I feel like we went on a huge side tangent, which is totally fine because it's relevant. But <laughs> well, but I, but I mean, this is this all ties back to why this is so important. Yeah, you know, because you know, there's people that fight us every single day on this, and they're like, "Well, no, I need to start doing this now, otherwise I'll never get to it." And it's like, "Well, no. How about you take care of the things that are going to immediately get you there, 
And then, yeah, if there's <laughs> longer term things, a big thing I like to talk about is planting the seed. Yep. I right? was going to say laying the foundation. Laying the foundation, planting the seed. <laughs> so you might do, you might allocate a little bit of your time to that, right? So let's say you're like, going to spend... Uh, writing a book. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people are like, I really want to write a book, but it's a long term thing that I, you know, I'm going to start talking about it now, start thinking about it now, but I'm not going to actually write it till a year from now. That's something where you don't want to lose sight of that altogether because you don't want to leave writing a book until like, oh, it has to be done now. Now I've got to go cram a book. You want to kind of lay the foundation, figure out what points you want to be at throughout that next year and say, <clears throat> I'm not going to focus all my time and energy on this because I'm not planning to have it done until next year. But what I do want is to get an outline. Uh, have an overview of the topics and chapters, maybe start having some little like writing sessions where I'm pulling some inspiration out yep. and building off of those. But it's going to be piece by piece over time. I'm not going to spend all of my weeks writing this book that I don't actually need to have done until next year. Yeah. Similarly, obviously, you've got a business you're running now. You need to focus more of your time on keeping that business going and bringing the income in. Um, because in order to have that book, like you have to have this going, you have to have this continuing on. Otherwise, you're not going to get to that goal of writing the book because there's going to be no business. Yeah, well, and, and this actually ties into a lot of people. Um, they always hear about multiple streams of income. Yep. And like, obviously, we have multiple streams of income. But what a lot of people will do is they'll try to start multiple streams at once. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to focus on one stream of income. You want to get one business, get it growing, and get that working. And then you can transition that into other ones as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've talked a lot about like why you should be doing this and some examples of where it's worked and where it hasn't. Um, but what I want to do now is just kind of dive a little bit deeper into how do you figure out what those revenue generating activities are yep. or where you should be focused versus not focused? Yeah, and you're probably getting tired of hearing this, but everything is going to go back to what is your bigger picture vision? Because that's ultimately what is going to decide what you're spending your time on, on a quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily basis. So the first step to making sure that you're focusing on those immediate result actions is getting really clear on your 90-day goals. What is the next big thing you're trying to accomplish in the next 90 days? Make sure that the tasks you're focusing on are actually going to give you progress towards those goals. Yep. And, you know, we've talked about kind of the goal format that we use. So, you know, go from where you're at today to where you want to be by a time frame. Then we have people define key actions. What are the three to five main things that you've got to do to make that transition from where you are to where you want to be? What are the daily routines that you need to do? And then what are those metrics? So the reason that we use that format and, and really harp on that is because that's going to guide you and really help you define if this is something that's going to contribute to your goal or not. Mm -hmm. And then what you can also do is use that as a filter. So something new comes in, somebody shares a new idea with you, you can say, okay, does this get me to that goal? Or does this get me there better than one of the other things I was going to do? And then maybe I'll swap out. But if the answer is no, it's like, that might be a good idea, but it's a good idea for the future, mm -hmm. not for right now. Yep. You know, and then um, the other thing that I think is important, and you talked about earlier, you really want to understand what phase of business you're in. Because let's say you're at the beginning of business. Your main focus is understanding your business model and really validating it. And what that means is that you know who you're targeting, um, what problems they have, what the right solution is, how much they're willing to pay, what it's going to cost you, and how you're going to find those customers and consistently make sales. Then as your business grows and you get to different phases, your focus might be different. Your mm -hmm. focus now might be, all right, now that I've got sales coming in, I got to start putting systems and processes in place because I'm running out of time and I'm the limit of my business. It might be starting to hire people in to delegate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's going to be different focuses depending on what phase of business you're at, which is why it's important to know not only what your goals are, but what phase you're you're at yeah, and, and then as, what you'll do. As you continue to move through those phases, you're going to find that sometimes your time will be spent doing more of those long-term goals, those long, long-term game tasks. 
Um, but definitely your time is always going to be split between the immediate actions and the long term. But it's a it's a difference in ratio of how much you're spending on each of those. So when you're early on just getting started, it's good to think about what the goals are, but you shouldn't really be focusing on a ton of long term stuff because as you're figuring things out, the long term stuff's going to keep changing and keep evolving. So, focusing time on that doesn't really make sense if you're going to have to keep going back and changing those things. You know, obviously, we, we made that mistake when we changed our business name multiple times over a couple year period, we, we were looking like long term, like, oh, we're going to be this and this is going to be our brand and we're going to build this out instead of really focusing in on who we were serving and what we were selling and not worrying so much about the names and the brand and all that. And now I got a bunch of stuff that says Startup Academy in our basement that we're <laughs> never going to use again. <laughs> yep. Well, I was going to say, that's a great point, too, because one of the things we always talk about, especially with early on early on, what most people end up focusing on is all the wrong things, their name, their logo, their website, all these other things where it's like early on, like understanding what phase you're in, your main focus should be validating the business idea, making sure you have customers, making sure you know what they need. All the other stuff will come later, but that's where so many people get thrown off is because they don't know what phase they're in and then they don't know the key focuses of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And just a little kind of teaser, one of the things that we're working on that we're going to be sharing with you guys in the future is really a guide for what those different phases are and what you should be focused on, and more importantly, what you shouldn't be focused on at each phase. Tease, tease. Yeah, so I mean, (laughs) because this this is really important, and without having this guide, it can be difficult to figure out what phase you're in and where you should be focused, Um, but we're looking forward to sharing this with you guys because it's made a big difference with us, um, with our clients, and then we wanna get it out to you guys as well. Yeah, and um, I think one of the hardest things too is, being able to say no to those things. So we've talked about, you know, obviously you want to always be doing the tasks that are serving you, that are getting you to the next level, the next goal that you want to reach. Um, but oftentimes people struggle with how do I, how do I know what to say no to? How do I know what things to cut out or what things to hand off to somebody else? Um, and I think that's just worth touching upon because, I know I've gotten caught with that over the last how many years, um, just saying, well, these are the things that I always do and that I've done in the business for so long. How do I transition from having it be me doing those tasks to having someone else do them or to just cutting them out? Like it's just, it's such a scary feeling for so many people to say, well, this is what I've done for the last two years. And now because it's not serving me and my needs, I'm just going to say no. Like it just, it's a very difficult mental state to be like, okay, this is weird. (laughs) I'm not doing this thing anymore. Like it, it feels like you lose yourself a little bit. Yeah. Well, so the first thing I'll say, um, this was a very important reframe that I had years ago. Oops. It's not always no, Oftentimes it's not now Mm. because when we say no to something, we kind of feel like it's the end. But when you say (laughs) not now and like what we've introduced is that we've got a place to capture all of these ideas. And when we do like our goal planning every 90 days or every year, we go back and check out all of those things and say, it was not now before, but for any of those, is it now the right time? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is just realizing that. Um, The second thing is this concept of an opportunity cost. And this is one of the most important things for people is whenever you do something or you don't do something, there's an opportunity cost associated with that. So like, let's, um, let's use money, for example. Let's say you have $100. If you spend that $100 on, I don't know, what do you spend $100 on? A new game. Uh, you're yeah. asking me, the person who never goes shopping. I was going to say, we <laughs> groceries? Clearly, neither of us go shopping. <laughs> yeah, so if you spend that $100 on groceries, that means you're missing out on the opportunity to spend that $100 somewhere else. Or let's do it the other way. Let's say you went out and bought a brand new video game for $100. Now you're missing, one of your opportunity costs is if you don't have any more money, you now can't buy groceries, right? So, What we've all got to realize is that whether it's our money, whether it's our time, there's always an opportunity cost. So you want to make decisions based on where you can get the most value out of it. You know, so 
what a lot of people do is they just won't make decisions and there's still an opportunity cost to that. Yep. You know, so you want to be intentional about where is it that you want to spend your time and your money. And if you don't believe me, look at some of the biggest companies in the world. Like a great example is Apple. Apple doesn't have 500 different products, right? Apple has a handful of them. And part of what Steve Jobs used to do is he would get like all his top people together. They would do planning. They would come up with new products he would make them skinny it down to a top 10 list and then he would make them skinny it down to like a top two or three mm -hmm. list. And what he was doing was saying, all of these other things are a not now and we're really gonna focus on these things because this is where we can move the needle and this is where our efforts are going to give us the biggest impact. So coming back to your question about like, I've been doing this, how do I let it go? What we all have to look at is what's our opportunity cost of doing the things that we've always done mm -hmm. compared to maybe delegating that or stop doing it if it's not serving us. And then because of that, what can we then do instead and how much more success or results can we have because we've made that decision? I love that. I love that reframe. And I think um, that makes sense for a lot of people looking at it from the opportunity cost point of view. Yeah. You know, and the other thing too, a lot of times people don't realize that the things you're doing, people might not even be looking at, you know? So a lot of times people are like, like, for example, we had um, a Facebook group mm -hmm. called Family Entrepreneur Life. And, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, how much time that was taking from us, whether that was the best use of our time. And part of our opportunity cost was any time we spent with that group helping people was time that was taken away from helping like our paying lifestyle builders or writing our book or doing or everything our else or our family. So we had to kind of figure that out. And then part of what we realized was that we weren't actually reaching or helping as many people as we thought. And, you know, when we like the, the week before we closed it down, we actually ran some like workshops and we didn't get nearly as many people from that group on these free trainings that we thought we would. Mm -hmm. So we thought like, oh, man, if we shut this down, all these people are going to be missing out. But what we found was that the people that really wanted our help had already had already asked for it. Yeah, had already asked for it or became clients that week. Yep. Um, but in our minds, it was like, oh, well, we can't shut this down because we're helping so many people. In some cases, our perception is very different than reality. Yep. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's something that you you don't really think about until somebody else asks you the question. And I remember um, multiple people had kind of like given you that feedback, like, oh, you guys are, are still running the free Facebook group. You know, do you get do you get a lot of people joining your paid program from there? And, and we had to stop and think and say, I guess we haven't gotten as many as, as we thought we would. And a lot of the people that were in there weren't really engaging within the group. They weren't like stepping up and posting. They weren't asking questions. They weren't supporting other people in the group as well. So I, you know, the ultimate reason that we had created that group, it wasn't doing what it was, what it was meant to do. And that was to, to help people, to get people to kind of step up and raise their hand and say, hey, I'm having struggles with this, or hey, I'm here, I'm a family entrepreneur, I wanna support other family entrepreneurs. Um, and, and so we ultimately decided like, okay, this maybe this isn't the right time to have this. So it came back to the, it's not no forever, it's not right now. Yeah, well, and you bring up a good point. So for us, it wasn't so much about the money. It wasn't so much about like, oh, well, we're not getting these people into our paid programs, but it was more about um, people weren't engaging. Mm -hmm. And what that was doing for us was it wasn't letting us fulfill our mission of helping as many people as we could. Yep. So what we had to do, and you know, we had these conversations, we said, okay, there's an opportunity cost to everything we do. So where should we be spending our time to help the most entrepreneurs? And when we looked at it, our podcast was a good use of our time for that because we're getting this message and sharing all of this out with you guys. We looked at um, the Facebook group. That wasn't a great example because there would be times where we would offer up, you know, free advice or free coaching or ask us anything and we weren't getting a lot of responses. Mm -hmm. So when we compared that to some of the other things that we're doing, well, we're and like, the most that doesn't make sense. Well, and the most people in our free group were our we're lifestyle already, builders. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's obviously, um, you know, part of it is is a financial piece. But for us, the bigger reason was, like you said, 
people weren't engaging and people weren't helping each other. And we weren't able to fulfill the mission that we have, which is to help all of these entrepreneurs grow better businesses to build better lives. Yeah. And I mean that a lot of that comes back on us, not understanding and not putting out the expectations and the goals of what the group was meant to be. And continuing to do like some of those priority tasks of getting more people in, keeping the engagement up, like doing all of the things that were necessary in there. Um, and that was a lot of times because we had to have that conversation of what are the priority tasks in our businesses? And, you know, the priority tasks were the revenue generating income tasks that we were supposed to be doing yep. on a daily basis. And then it was like, well, the, the Facebook group is really fun. It's part of our mission. We love doing it. But when it comes up to how many hours we have in a day, less and less time was being set aside for us to generate those tasks in the group of let's get more people in, let's get people talking, let's let's help more entrepreneurs. So it kept getting pushed aside and it kept getting bumped down the priority list. And for me, that was really tough because I don't I don't like having things just be kind of sitting out there, mm -hmm. not being able to put 100% into that project and that thing. So as we kept having less and less time, I had to keep having that that conversation with myself. Like, I, I can't put any more brain power into what we're doing. Like, I, I'm giving everything that I have and not a lot's left over. And I didn't want to keep trying to run a Facebook group that was all about being supportive and community and ha people helping each other if I couldn't be present and show up the way that I wanted to. Well, so I think that was part uh, of it too, like looking at, all right, here's what we said our goals were. Here's what we originally created this group for. We're not living up to that expectation. So instead of trying to like burn the candle at both ends, we said, not right now. We're going to just put it on the shelf and hopefully do all the things that we need to do now in our business so that we can ultimately go back and do things the right way. Yeah, well, and, you know, I, I think you bring up a good point, too. We always talk about not splitting your focus too much. And oftentimes when you are splitting your focus, you're not giving the full attention Correct. or the right attention to any of those things. Mm -hmm. So more often than not, you're better off to shut down or say no to some of the activities to give the focus where it needs to be now so that you can then go back and give the right focus to those other things later on. Because if yeah. you try to do everything at once, you're not going to move any of them forward. Correct. But if you can really focus in, you'll be able to move those forward and then you'll do a better job with the other stuff when it's the right time. Yeah. All right. What is your homework for everyone today? So what I want you guys to, to focus on is think about where you're at in your business. Really look at your goals and then make a list of all the activities that you're currently doing and start mapping which ones are a right now and should be your focus and which ones maybe should you put on the shelf and they'll be a focus later on. You totally stole mine. I was going to say that. So this is why you don't ask me first. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I was trying to be nice. All right. So I think my homework for you today is going to be identifying, um, five immediate action results that you want to take and finding time in your weekly daily schedule to actually go and implement those. Like it. Like it. Especially on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Never asking you first again. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, this is something that obviously we talked a lot about and we, we dove in t deep into some areas. Um, but if you are somebody who is feeling like maybe you're spending too much time on the long-term stuff versus the immediate action, or you're just really not sure what to be spending your time on, um, this is something where you could go and jump into one of our free trainings to really look at what are those goals that you're trying to hit and how do you kind of break those down so that you are focusing on the immediate action results? So we will put a link to that free training up in the show notes page, which is tomandariana.com slash 45. What's mm -hmm. your book today, man? What's on the bookshelf? So the book today is called The Pumpkin Plan. And the subtitle is A Simple Strategy to Grow a Remarkable Business in Any Field. And so this is by uh, Mike Michalowicz. You, um, you might recognize the name. He's written a couple other books. And this was, so 
he's a very different author. Um, he's got comedy and he kind of makes uh, correlations between different things. And in this book, he basically looked at pumpkin farmers and looked at the ones that grew like the biggest pumpkins and said, what separates them from the pumpkin farmers that grow regular pumpkins? And what a lot of he found is a lot of what we talked about here today. The ones that grow the biggest pumpkins focus on those pumpkins. They cut out the other ones that aren't going to be as big. Um, they cut out the distractions and they kind of go all in. And so a lot of what he talks about, he then correlates over to business and says, you know, the businesses that really do well are the ones that can figure out what those key actions are and focus on those and relentlessly cut and protect their time from the other stuff that could distract them. Mm. So I think it's really relevant um, for this topic. And, you know, there's just a lot of good takeaways that you can get from this, regardless of where you're at with your business. I like it. All right. It has been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And as always, remember, it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Are you frustrated by a lack of momentum in your business? Do you want real-time guidance and support from seasoned entrepreneurs who really care about your results? If you're nodding your head or awkwardly shouting yes in public somewhere, then we invite you to join Lifestyle Builders, a mentorship program designed to meet you where you are and give you strategic and custom guidance so you can build the business you need for the life you crave. You can find out more at joinlifestylebuilders.com. Your life, your business, your way. Your way Join Family Entrepreneur Life. Your way Join Family Entrepreneur Life.